Hi, it's Tamar with the Lived Experience Practitioner or LXP Discrimination Diaries. And you're probably looking at this and thinking, oh my God, she's like got herself a bit glammed up. And you know why? Because I have had two weeks of utter shit. I've looked like shit. This is why I haven't done diary entry. I've been in bed shittest few weeks. I've been exhausted. I've looked like rubbish. Um, I've got enough done diary entries where I look like crap, where I'm crying. Um, the last few weeks I've cried a river. No, actually I've cried an ocean. The ocean has been polluted and full of snotty tissues. I've looked like rubbish. I've felt like rubbish. Just cried and cried and cried, not got out of bed. Felt horrendous. And I just feel like today, um, I need to take back my power and just, you know, I want to look in the mirror and just think, damn, she looks fine. You look fine. And, <laughs> you know, I wanted to dress up. I'm sick of COVID and looking, I, I don't know. We don't get time to dress up. We don't get time to go out. We don't get time to see our mates or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, just I just felt like dressing up, looking a bit, you know, a bit more like me. <laughs> whatever that is so yeah so um anyway for this diary entry um i am thinking um yeah let's get back to the lxp roots let's get back to um oh, I'm, I'm gonna try and wrap this up a little bit like storytelling kind of thing um sort of um i'm not a big fan of telling your story or, or what have you what what i'm going to try and do is um uh, a little bit like um, uh, autoethnography. Well, obviously, this is diary entries, isn't it? You know, it's looking at the impact of shit, um, basically discrimination. But um, I'm going to try and, I don't know, I'm going to try and tell an interesting story. So, um, yeah, shit few weeks, angry few weeks, exhausted few weeks, tired few weeks. Um, what happens when the energy returns? Um, so at one point I was so horrendously, I was desperate, absolutely desperate. And, um, you know, um, worried too, cause I'm thinking, do you know what? This is, um, this is enough for the, you know, the upstairs, like <laughs> putting up with enough, like, you know, what am I gonna, what am I gonna, gonna do here? Like I need, you know, desperately need some, something. What? what so um kind of in desperation i'd asked um someone for like a reiki healing thing thinking you know you can give it a try can't you you know um and i had absolutely no idea whether it would work or not i don't really think that um i'm kind of open um i'm not really sure that um I don't really believe or not believe, so because um, I'm open, I don't really see it as a placebo or not a placebo, I just see what happens. Um, anyway, in the morning I kind of woke up and I thought, do you know what, I'm just, I'm so ill shit at the moment that I doubt anything can really help, you know, and I'm kind of like, I'm not feeling anything much. And I didn't feel anything much during the healing. Um, and then um, I thought, oh. I can breathe, I can breathe right down to my stomach um, and um, like the anxiety had been so bad that so I hadn't been able to sort of breathe down to my stomach and there's there's this kind of line of thought um, in some cultures that the stomach kind of holds the power and that, you know, if you're, um, um, you know, if you've had your power taken away um, or, you know, if there's abuse, if there's kind of things, you know, abuse, um, power taken away, that, that sort of thing, stomach problems. So it was interesting that I could breathe right down there and I thought, oh, so, you know, probably something's happened. And, um, it was interesting that I got better over, um, there was, um, it wasn't so much that day, but it was the day after. Suddenly I had a day where I felt normal that I hadn't, I haven't felt like that for, oh my God, like, I don't know, maybe, hmm, I say months, but maybe during the last like, 18 months, I, d I don't know, like normally enough to be able to like, you know, I tidy the kitchen, 
kind of like I cleaned the kitchen. Nobody told me to do it. I did it. I didn't do that. That's weird. <laughs> so yeah. So um, you know, it was amazing, and I felt great. But I suddenly realised how bad I've been feeling the rest of the time. I was like, oh my god, that's terrible. And then I was like, oh well, this is great. I'm all right now. I'll be fine. Excellent. I can like cope with all this this shit. Fantastic. Um, the day after, I thought, oh, I'm feeling a bit tired. I should I should rest. This is probably a good thing. And then um, yeah. I, back to shit again so um what can i say um um what can i say about the impact of all this this crap this this discrimination the um the the crap <laughs> the stuff that just put in put it up with so you know i've got a load of polypharmacy going on with you know dealing with all these symptoms body's breaking down at the moment i've got sort of anxiety shit going on um being a woman you've got the whole hormone cycle thing so the last um week or or so had that going on which um it obviously makes things a lot worse so this week you know it's just coming to the end and um beginning of the week suddenly the energy starts to return and oh my god there was suddenly rage because I've like I've gone from like feeling you know mm. to this rage, this rage, and like suddenly like it all comes out. It comes out like this like this this fucking teenager who's like ranting and angry and kind of like um oh you know this stereotype kind of poster child for um oh BPD kind of you know um oh hysterical woman like all the all the um nasty horrible things that people say about um like personality disorder suddenly it was like um you know i was kind of um i'd sort of embodied that to rant about all the all the shit that um it was like all this shit had been put upon me and I was suddenly pushing it back saying, no, no, I'm not taking that. No, no, enough of this fuckery. No, 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 you can take this. You can fuck off, you can fuck off and you can fuck off a bit further and fuck off. And, um, you know, just completely, you know, and, um, you know, when you can feel something happening and you can kind of like, you know it's almost like you can go out of your body you can take a seat you can eat some popcorn and just think what the fuck is going on so anyway um shit goes down and then you know the next day or so you're able to kind of sit back and reflect and think you know what what's happening so so the thing the thing about the um um being a lived experienced practitioner think about these diaries the thing about um kind of entries and thinking about things and learning about things is that the whole point is um is learning it's getting the insight you know it's it's kind of um understanding shit it's it's um <laughs> it's learning to work with this stuff so you know to to pick shit out so anyway um i was thinking about it i was thinking well why? What was what was going on there? Why was this kind of this um, this kind of like real teenage kind of almost this teenage kind of reaction sort of thing happening? I mean, aside from the fact that yes, you know, um, hormones kind of all over the place. So genuinely, you know, like teenage hormones kind of were were probably actually going on. But um, you know, even when I was a teenager, I wasn't really like a teenager I was kind of weird I was kind of um what, what can I say with big glasses and you know little nerd in the corner reading a book kind of thing I was very good I wasn't like a like a normal kid but um you know I was thinking about thinking what what was that and I was like I came down to it and I thought oh, bloody hell I was really frightened I was at the moment I'm so frightened I'm so scared I'm I'm so scared and so um this health thing has got me really scared because I've got all this, all these symptoms that keep happening. They keep changing. They keep, um, 
and they're real as well they're not this isn't just like you know when you're stressed and you get like you know you get pains in your stomach and you know or you get headaches and you kind of you know it's stress and you put it down to stress and all, all this kind of stuff you know um not that that's okay by the way because those pains are still real and that headache is still real and all the rest of it but it's stuff like i mean like having a seizure that is like you know <laughs> no that's uh, you know they can measure this shit At the end of the week i've got to have like all these like wire things put on my head and they're gonna like measure shit you know another reason why i'm why i'm so you know um yeah so um you know i was i was thinking about it. i was thinking well it, you know i'm i am scared and i'm scared about all this stuff and i'm, I'm scared about um you know um it's the fact that all these it, it's like my body's breaking down and it's all kind of uncontrolled and you know um things like i've had to have my sort of my mouth my jaw operated on my kind of like my you know be given this mouth guard thing be given i mean these are like physical operations caused by like stressy kind of stuff and i'm angry i'm so angry that um this has happened and i'm so so i've got all these kind of this pent-up anger but also the rage that um stuff isn't being or hasn't been done about it stuff hasn't been listened to stuff hasn't you know all these these things that are it, you know it makes sense but the i think the teenager that's scared at the moment is that um you know it's powerless because you know if you're a if you're a teenager you're kind of like you might be um sound enough and everything but at the end of the day you haven't really got that much power you can't you know it's the adults that decide and they kind of you know tell you where to go or what you know they've got the power over you they make the decisions so you can sound off as much as you like you know but um um you know they can harm you and it's scary so yeah um and the other thing that i was thinking of was um you know it's affecting it more thinking about well why you've got to think about um you know you, you think a bit more underneath why 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 and um um it it took me back to um because these diaries are thinking about discrimination and it 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 um one of the things about lived experience practitioner, mental health working, um, um, employment side, etc., etc., um, our field isn't really that developed. Um, we haven't got the um, amount of literature or thought or development that um, is available, say, in the LGBT, but particularly the um, um, kind of like. So, civil rights and the um racial equality arena so if you want to learn shit we have to kind of <laughs> you know don't reinvent the wheel look queer people have already written about this stuff so i was thinking back to um the msc course that i've done and there's an absolutely beautiful paper written by an iobc actually it's not a paper it's a chapter in a book i can't remember what the book's called um, I've looked it up, it's chapter 5, The Dynamics of Difference by Anne Ayabusi, who's a nurse consultant. So, um, I mean, that's amazing straight away because Anne Ayabusi is, um, I mean, nursing, you're thinking about a um, discipline that is um, often seen as, uh, it's seen as kind of, less than in terms of um you know like the medical profession you've got the medics the doctors and then the nurses are kind of seen as kind of like that less less than or you know they're not treated as as um it, it, you know as kind of senior as and and what have you and yet Anne is someone who um works as a she's a nurse consultant you know nurses can um nurses work from 
you know, you've got your student nurses, nurse apprentices, and um, you've got people that work um, from one level right through to nursing directors. Um, and you've got, you know, all people in between. And um, the, the thing is that often when you get to these higher levels, they're often occupied by, um, uh, you know, white men. So what I love about Anne is that you've got a black woman who has got up to this nursing consultant position. Fantastic. And she's writing about the dynamics of difference. So this is something that's really helped me to understand um, a bit more about lived experience practitioner working and why, why we end up in these situations. Why? So um, I'll, I'll come on to it. Basically, she's writing and she gave the example of nurses um, who are working. It was in a secure um a secure healthcare setting. Um, I can't remember if it's a prison or not. Um, no, I think it's a hospital ward. Whatever. It's a secure setting anyway. And they needed more nurses. Um, you know, couldn't get couldn't get British nurses, so um, they they um, recruited from overseas. So the overseas nurses that they had, um, they were perfectly well experienced and perfectly well qualified. Um, you know, they just went from the same country. <laughs> that's the that's the only thing that was, you know, they were different. Came over, um, filled those much needed places, and um yeah, people were treating them though as less than as incompetent, you know, because there were these people that have come over from wherever and Obviously, in their country, they don't work as well as over here and blah, blah, blah. So you've got these nurses who actually were completely competent and um, they, their colleagues start to treat them as though they're incompetent. Service users start to see the difference in the way that they are treated and they start to catch on and they start treating them as though they're incompetent as well. So suddenly um, they're being treated as incompetent from both um, um, sort of, you know, both ends. And then what happens is that they've gone from being these competent workers in their own country to suddenly they absorb this incompetency and they become um, incompetent. I mean, they're not incompetent, but suddenly they start making stupid mistakes and kind of doing things that they wouldn't ordinarily do. And it's amazing how when you um, are treated a certain way, you will absorb that and eventually you will kind of like, you know, start to reflect it. You become, you know, you put, you're put in a position and, um, you know, if eventually you know you're given you're given a role and um it, it, you know it, it it gets taken i mean this is this is kind of like you're looking at group dynamics and and stuff like this and and Anne kind of she she's drawing on the work of beyond and blah 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 so if you read it you can go and look at the reasonable sources that she's um looking at etc etc but um, the point is, is that you can apply this to the nurses on the receiving end, but there's also something about the, um, the, um, people that did that, because there's something about the situation that they were in where, you know, why did they, why did they treat the nurses like that? Were they, um, you know, was there some, why was there that kind of internalised racism? Was there, was there some form of, um... I don't know, feeling, feeling threatened, was there, what, what, why was that? You know, there's, there's some reason why people who, um, as in individuals, they might have been okay, they might have, um, you know, you'd like, I don't know, maybe everyone's a bit racist, I don't, you know, so that song isn't there on Avenue Q, but it's, it's, uh, sometimes you put people in situations, um, and within a structure, they will behave in a way that um, they wouldn't ordinarily do as individuals. So I don't, I don't know. That's that's taken it a bit further. But uh, come back to um, you know the situation that that I'm in at the moment. 
um, and also that if you're a lived experience practitioner watching this, um, you're in this at the moment. Um, many of us are in this, um, where you're you're in a situation where you um, um, you'll be the you'll be being treated a, a certain way. Often you'll be in a um, you'll be in a role where you're paid less, where you're um, treated as less, where you don't have the um, opportunities of progression that your colleagues have, where you're not, um, where you're just not recognised, you're not, um, you're not treated the same and people, other people can't see it and um, they, you know, they think it's okay and what happens is that eventually you absorb that and you kind of become. So what I found, um, particularly over the last, um, I'd say particularly the last year or so, is that um, I felt as though I've become this and my, um, um, it's ripped my confidence away. It's, um, I feel as though actually I am incompetent and I feel as though I am this kind of um, sort of, I don't know, this terrible person that nobody can work with. I am this, you know, everything that I'm just kind of absorbing everything and just feeling like utter rubbish, you know. However, what has helped is um, the fact, um, and th this is what I would say to other people as well. Often when you're working within this type of work, you'll be isolated. So you'll be working, um, you'll often be working within teams and, and be the only person kind of within that team working as a lived experience practitioner. You might have connection to, um, I, I don't know, sort of other people you might, you might not, you know, but it's often sort of remotely and that's, that's how many of us work. But, um, oh, what am I saying? Um, uh, where was I? Where am I? Um, yeah, what really, really helps is if you manage to keep, um, keep, keep contact, keep communication with, um, with others who work in your field, um, particularly keep contact with people who've, um, are further down the, um, um, in your discipline than you. Pe keep contact with people who are more experienced, keep contact with, um, you know, people who know their stuff. This is, this is something that I do. It's something that, you know, I, I read stuff that's written by other people. I engage in conversations on um, Twitter. I get to, um, I don't know, I just, um, it's one of the things that's helped me to realise that these things are real. It's not just in my head. It's not just a delusion <laughs> that I have. It's a real, real thing. And also, um, you know, that this discrimination is, is a real thing. It's not just me <laughs> being t Tamar, being a, a mad woman. Although I identify as mad, hey. Anyway, but um, <laughs> um, what I'm trying to say. The, the other thing as well is when you have um, um, a range of different... Um, um, what, what can also help is to have a range of different projects that you're working on. Now, I know this is difficult because, you know, that means it, that, you, that you have to, um, you know, find and, and do these projects but one thing that I've, I've found has really been helpful is that um, while while I've um, struggled in one area um, at the very same time I've been able to be part of um, writing um, so I've been a co-author on seven academic papers I've been part of um, national steering groups that are working on um, kind of national policy and work I'm part of um, an exec board um, um, working with research I'm, I'm doing various different things and I kind of like almost have those receipts does that make sense I kind of like I've got 
I've got my name on things. I've got something to show for that. Um, I run the Mad Studies group in Birmingham and, um, you know, people come to that. People come to that every month. People ask me about it every month. They, there's, pe there's academics, there's, there's people that come from, you know, <laughs> across the world now, actually. And um, what I'm really proud of is that um, not only does it attract the people that write this stuff, um, but it attracts people who aren't academics as well. And you get that interchange of, you get that knowledge sharing. It's lovely. It's really great. And people enjoy it. And I enjoy it. And it nourishes me. And it nourishes them. And it's lovely. But um, the thing is, these things, they kind of, they help me to know, actually, I'm not rubbish. This isn't about me being shit. So when I'm kind of in a situation where I'm constantly being told I am shit or that I'm rubbish or that I'm, you know, terrible to work with or that, you know, something is my opinion and my opinion is wrong and, you know, that... Um, that it you know that when i say i'm being harmed and that the harm needs to be addressed that it isn't just me being over the top because i can work in other um environments and not be harmed and i can produce like you know shit hot work hey <laughs> but you know so i've got the receipts for it hey so, yeah, what would I say to other people? Yeah, you're going through, through this stuff kind of, um, you know, do, do, um, um, yeah, spread, spread your wings a bit and kind of like get your, get your support from different areas and also help yourself to know that, um, you know, remind yourself of where you're, you're good and you're, um, and you've got where well, your talents are, because all of us have got talents, you know. Um, particularly, you know, people who work in this area. A lot of us are very. You gotta be resilient to work in this area, you know. We wouldn't, but, you know, if um, if you're watching this, if you work in this area, you wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be here on this video watching this, you know weird niche thing if you weren't um you know <laughs> you gotta have you gotta have some talent and some balls and some you gotta have something about you to be doing this let's face it so anyway um what i'll try and do at some point i will actually find where the um where that chapter comes from chapter five dynamics are different and i abuse um <laughs> I don't know what book it is. <laughs> I've just got a PDF of it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I'll try and find it. Um, actually, I might just tweet her, find out where it is. Anyway, okay. So I'll shut up now. But um, yeah, this is. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, I've actually made an effort. Put a face on, so I haven't got you know a big red nose or tissues and crying all over the place because you know <sighs> right okay i'll see you next time <laughs>